Alaikum. My name is Ms. Fatima Muhammad Iqbal from Palestinian Schools in Qatar. Today we are going to conclude unit number 9 with period number 11 and 12. As we know that we conclude each unit with an episode from the novel Around the World in 80 Days. This ninth episode is about an attack in the Wild West. As you can see in the picture that you can see there is an attack by CEO. You remember in our last episode, Passepartout went to the market to buy some guns as he had heard that there might be an attack by CEO. I told you in our last episode that CEO are the Native Americans and they kept on fighting for their land. They were the real owners of America and they kept on fighting for their land with white Americans, those who came later. These are the Native Americans and they were called CEO. In this picture you can see that there is a fight between two opponents and there is a lady as well who is shooting uh, from inside the train. Let's find out what happens here. Again, it's an adventurous episode. Plus, we have some notes. You must read them. And then we have a matching exercise as well as this labeling exercise. Let's begin. I usually begin the episode with the video in order to make my student understand the full scenario of the text. This is part two. They saw right away what was causing the commotion. A hundred Indians had leaped from galloping horses onto the train. Three had climbed onto the engine and knocked the engineer unconscious. Now the train was racing forward at an uncontrollable speed. The Indians were armed with guns. They slipped through the windows and doors of the cars, shooting at the passengers. Many passengers were armed as well and fired back. The conductor was fighting beside Mr. Fogg. He knew that a garrison of soldiers was at the next station, Fort Kearney, which they were fast approaching. Their only hope was to stop the train so that the soldiers could come to their aid. A shot hit the conductor in the chest. As he fell, he cried, Unless the train is stopped, we're lost. It shall be stopped, said Phileas Fogg, preparing to rush through the cars to the engine. Stay, monsieur, and protect Ayuda, said Passepartout. I will go. Mr. Fogg had no time to stop the courageous Passepartout, who crawled through a door and slipped under the train. While bullets whizzed between the Indians and the passengers, smashing windows and punching the seats, Passepartout clung dangerously above the speeding tracks. He crawled forward from one car to the next until he reached the first car. Hanging by one hand, he released the chains that attached the engine to the rest of the train. The train shuddered violently and the engine detached from the rest of the cars. The engine raced ahead, but the cars began to slow. After several minutes, they stopped, only a hundred feet from the station. Passepartout crawled out from underneath the first car. Before he could brush himself off, he felt a pistol against his head. He turned to see a group of Indians had surrounded him on horseback, and everything went black. Help! Help! Somebody help me! Oh, hello there. As you can see, I'm in a bit of trouble. Captured by Indians. Let's help Mr. Startled by the sound of gunfire, the soldiers of Fort Kearney hurried to the train. The Indians quickly gave up the fight and fled. As the Indians galloped away, the passengers gathered on the station platform. Some of the passengers were wounded, but Aouda was safe and unharmed. Phileas Fogg had not received a scratch, and Fix was only slightly wounded on his arm. They had all been lucky. Colonel Proctor was the person most gravely injured, having been shot through the thigh. It was soon discovered, however, that three passengers were missing, including the brave Frenchman Passepartout. The passengers looked around. 
Hmm. So the passengers looked around, but they didn't find the brave fisherman along with two persons more. So this episode showed us the bravery of Mr. Passepartout. Let's start reading it. By the evening after the adventure at the bridge, the travelers had reached the highest point of their journey. In four days and four nights, they had traveled 1,382 miles from San Francisco. Now they simply had to go down from the Rocky Mountains and travel for another four days and four nights across the Great Plains to reach New York and the Atlantic Ocean. It was snowing a lot, but the train was moving steadily eastwards through the state of Utah, then Wyoming, and then on into Nebraska. Uh, dear student, this paragraph or maybe these three or four lines are very important because one question, in one question, you have to label the places. So you must know that which place comes first and then the second and the third one and then go on. And that was when the sound of guns was suddenly heard. Paspatut looked out of the window and saw that large number of CO warriors were attacking the train. Warriors, fighters. They were riding horses and some were climbing onto the carriage. Many had guns and they were shooting. The passengers on the train started fighting back as they had known about the possible attack from Seo. And among them was Oda, bravely shooting through the broken windows at any warrior that she saw. Now here, here we have something very, very different. When we watched the video, Oda was not fighting. She was just hiding. But your book is telling that she was fighting bravely. But things got worse when one of them attacked the driver. The train was soon out of control and moving faster and faster. Of course, when the driver was shot, so who would control the train? Fort Kearney station, which they were heading to, was now less than two miles ahead. And there were lots of soldiers there who could perhaps help them. Though clearly, not if the train was moving at top speed. You know, they, it means that they must stop at Fort Kearney station because there were some soldiers to help them. The conductor of the train shouted that someone had to stop the train before it went past the fort into open country. We will stop it, said Fong. But Passepartout, the brave man, pushed past him towards the front of the carriage and said, Stay here, sir. I will go. He first climbed out of the carriage and then secretly climbed under the other carriage towards the front of the train. See, if you remember the earlier episode, you would know that Passepartout was a circus acrobat. He was so flexible. So his previous jobs helped him to act dangerously and adventurously in any dangerous situation. So he did it. Now, when he finally got to the front, he pulled a metal bar as hard as he could. The engine then came away from the rest of the train. Carrots were free and started to slow down. While the engine now on its own way on went even faster, the carrots stopped because he unchained them. At last close to Fort Kearney station and the sound of guns brought the soldier there, running to the train to help. With this, the CO stopped their attack left the train and disappeared to the south. Many of the passengers were hurt, but no one was dead, luckily it seemed. But then when everything was calmer, everyone was counted and three 
did not answer, as their names were called. One of them was the brave French man who had saved the train and everyone on it. What happened? What had happened to these three? Had they been killed? Were they now prisoners of the CEO? No one knew. Tears ran down the face of Oda, who now owed her life for a second time to pass by dude. Why second time? I will find him, dead or alive, Fogg said quietly to Oda. And Oda knew that he was serious. She knew that nothing could stop him from trying to rescue Passepartout. This is Oda firing back on the CEO. Here, I mentioned that why she mentioned it second time. You remember in her uh, earlier episode, Oda was saved from Sati by whom? By Passepartout. So try to read the lesson and the, this part of novel again and again in order to know the answers of this question. Pause the video here and then I'll continue with the answers. You have to match sentences parts 1 to 8 and A to H to form a summary. A large group of Seahawks warriors attacked the train G while it was traveling across Nebraska. Number two, when the attack began, what happened? The passengers started using their guns to fight back. Two miles ahead, there were soldiers at Fort Kearney who could help the passengers and end the attack. But they could not stop at the fort because the train was out of control and going too fast. Then Passepartout climbed to the engine at the front of the train to try to save everyone. When he pulled the metal bar between that and the first carriage, the carriage came away and started to slow down. How brave he was. The attack soon ended when the soldiers came. However, the brave Passepartout had disappeared. And so Fogg decided that he must find him dead or alive. Check your answers and write there your answers in your book as well. Now the last question. Reread the first paragraph of the novel and you will find the names of these places, which mountains, which state, which fort, which great, it's very easy, here, they are going where, and which ocean is that? Check your answers. Good luck, my dear students, and try to read the novel at home in order to understand it very well. And don't forget, keep it in your mind for the next episode, which is coming in unit number 10. Thank you very much. Goodbye.